Okay, so today we're going to talk about regression, uh, which is one of the most common tools we use in the social science, and actually a lot of different disciplines use uh, regression to talk about causal relationships, um, particularly between uh, a dependent variable and an independent, independent variable, or the outcome variable and the variable that we think is causing an effect on that variable. One of the most basic relationships that we think about between two variables is a linear one. So as one, one variable goes up, the other one goes up a certain amount as well. One of the examples we were talking about last time was looking at um, the magnitude of an earthquake and the effect it has on the number of fatalities. And if you look at this chart here, we have here uh, the dots represent each case value that we have recorded. So here we have an earthquake that was below a 6 0.0 and we have it corresponds to a, a number of fatalities. Like last time uh, we discussed we're putting fatalities here in, in the natural log form. You don't need to worry about that. Um, just for the sake of simplicity just think about this as you know the higher you go up here the, the higher the numbers of deaths. And so we see the scatter plot is all over the place and um, you know how are we going to decipher any kind of relationship is dependent on how we think about a line. Uh, intersecting through these points. And regression analysis is really about drawing a line, but drawing one that's the most accurate. And here we drew several different lines just to show you that, you know, there's different options to think about this linear relationship. And regression is about choosing the best line that fits. One last note here is that you can actually build this chart on SPSS like we did in one of our videos at the end here. We'll just talk just about building charts. Um, but for now, just know that we created a chart somehow. Um, and, and like I said, regression is about finding um, the line that best fits. Um, and the method that we do it by is called ordinary le least squares, um, saying that basically the residual between the line and, and each case point is, is the minimum amount. It's basically we've minimized as much as possible the distances between the line and each individual case point. Okay, so how do we do a regression analysis? Well, um, basically we go to Analyze, we go to Regression, and we go to Linear Regression. Box comes up, and um, right now let's just worry about the dependent and independent variables. So our dependent variables is the number of people that got killed uh, in natural log form, so that goes over there. And our independent variable is the magnitude of the earthquake. And then just press OK. So anytime you run a regression analysis, several boxes will come up. Um, we have four boxes that come up, and it seems kind of scary at first, but it's uh, all pretty straightforward. If you just take one thing at a time, the first one just tells you, you can kind of just ignore uh, about which variables were included and excluded. Uh, the second box is a model summary. It just basically tells you how well the model explains the amount of variance in the outcome variable. And um, here we're looking at the R square, which is basically saying that about 12.5% of the variance is explained um, in this model, um, which is okay for social science standards. Um, we would want this number to be higher, but it's okay for right now. The second box is an ANOVA analysis, uh, and it gives you the sum of squares. Um, tells you how much um, kind of variance is explained through the regression model as opposed to the residual. So you have the regression plus residual equals the total. And so you see that the regression is actually statistically, uh, it gives you enough statistics, and it's actually telling you that it's explaining a fair amount uh, of variance, or at least a significant amount. And then the last box actually gives you the coefficients. Uh, for that line. First it gives you, like any line, you need a intercept, uh, y-intercept. Um, so that's the first constant that it gives you. So when uh, x equals 0, um, the line intersects the y-axis at negative 4.720. And then it gives you the actual coefficient it calculated for that line, which is really the slope of that line, um, which is a 1.498. It gives you the standard error for that estimate. Um, and it gives you the t-statistic and then tells you whether or not that's a significant level. And we can see here that um, 
in reading this uh, box, you can see that the effect of the magnitude of the earthquake has a significant effect on the outcome. Um, and one way to read this is to say that one unit change in the independent variable leads to a 1.498 change on the, the de dependent variable. So we see kind of a, uh, you know, every time magnitude goes up by one unit, uh, the outcome variable, according to our linear relationship, increases by 1.498 units. Um, and so that's kind of a, a substantial effect. It's a positive effect. One thing that's telling you it's a significant effect. And it's actually telling you uh, the magnitude of that effect. And so the last thing we want to mention here is that, as you were saying before, this 12.5% uh, uh, explanation of variance is not very strong. I mean, the social sciences, we never have perfect data, uh, so it's never going to be perfect. But 12.5 is, is still n not spectacular. And one thing we can do about this is to add other variables, other things that we think affect uh, the, the number of deaths uh, in this situation. And the more variables that we add, um, depending on how good those variables are, the R square is actually going to get better. Uh, or it's going to get higher. On the next video, we're going to show you how to add more uh, predictors that may improve this score.